that's a picture of me ever since i was a kid all i wanted to do was cook i grew up watching my mom turn simple fresh ingredients into delicious meals and i was blown away by the power a great meal had over people that's when i knew that i was passionate about food and i started dreaming about opening this cute little place of my own but then life happened and i went on to pursue dentistry i met my husband ankit and we instantly connected over a common love for food that's when i realized that deep down my dream of opening this cute little place hadn't really died down so one fine day i just went and quit my safe job as a senior lecturer at a dental college and together we started our dream restaurant pretty soon word got out and people started flocking up place and we became one of the best restaurants of amdavad and here i am giving you guys a tedx on how to never stop chasing your dreams even if it means letting go of your safe job i don't know about you guys but most of the motivational food talks that i have heard start like this you know with an inspiring mom or a grandmom who likes to cook and a childhood dream of a cafe how i wish that this was also the story that i was here to tell you today because honestly if this was my narrative my life would have been completely different and i would still have something that resembled a social life but it's not that's not even me i could never be this cool that's just some random kids picture that i found in our family photo album this is me and my i hate cooking face that i still walk around with because i'm a terrible terrible cook like so bad that if you sent me to kitchen i would end up burning water like me my mother is also a horrible cook but that's because she was a single mom bringing up two kids on her own while also being an officer in the indian army so most of our meals so most of our meals were either reheated stuff or takeouts i guess the point that i'm trying to make here is that food was never an important part of my life for me it was just something you needed to stay alive and that brings me to the first point that i want to highlight running a restaurant business is like running any other business you don't have to be a foodie or passionate about food or a great cook to run a restaurant what you do have to be however is 100% invested in it for better or for worse in sickness and in health and i know these are sounding like wedding vows but the fact is that you are going to be married to your restaurant unpopular opinion but serving great food is just 40% of what you should be doing right in a restaurant there is so much more to it than what meets the eye my name is dr navneet gill i am a professor at college of dental sciences and research center remember that safe job that i told you that i'd quit yeah so i never did that and thank god because it saved me so it's been 10 glorious years of teaching dentistry and loving every minute of it i am also the co-founder of nenis kitchen and baked by nenis from a tiny 42 seater in 2014 to now being the proud owner of five restaurants and eight bakery outlets across gujarat it's been thank you it's been quite a journey was it tough uh, very would be an understatement why then did i do it no inspiring story here just a girl madly in love with a boy who wanted to break away from his failing family business Now after Bollywood the second most glamorous thing which many people think they can easily pull off is opening a restaurant. We were one of those many people and we were told that the easiest way to go about it is to take a franchise because that's like buying stuff off IKEA they will give you the nuts bolts screws and the instruction manuals and all you will have to do is assemble and enjoy. So I took a loan on the only thing that I had going for me at that moment which was my salary and we settled for this small unknown Bombay based brand. because that was the only brand that we could afford at that time and we were all set that's me on the day of the opening tired but excited and expecting a huge waiting about to hit our restaurant any minute now because who wouldn't want to dine at this gorgeous gorgeous place that we had built with so much of love right and that is us the next day the day after the next week the next month and pretty much every month after that 
You see, what had happened was that the franchise owner had stopped picking our calls and the staff that he had sent over for the opening had disappeared overnight. And we realized that we had been conned. So here we were, two clueless people with 42 tables and chairs, some random kitchen equipment, a cook and a waiter and absolutely no idea with what to do with them. You know what's worse than having no experience? Having no money to even hire someone who has that experience. You see, every penny that we had, we had blown it up in trying to set up the restaurant without keeping aside what we now know is called as the cash buffer. That's the money you need to keep your restaurant running for the first six months when your restaurant will not make any money, like not even enough to pay your rent and salaries, which means that you will have to keep on pumping more money in addition to what you've already invested and no one. Absolutely no one had told us this. Forget six months, we didn't have enough to sustain us for the next six hours. Now we had started this journey in April 2014. By May, we had got rid of this brand. But instead of shutting shop, we decided to do everything all over again. And by September, we were ready to launch our own brand. We called it Nini's Kitchen because Nini is my mother-in-law and the only one in the family who had some idea about cooking. Now, because we couldn't afford a trained chef, uh, Nini sat down with a cook and she taught him how to make home style, less spicy, less oily North Indian food. And for that, we were beyond grateful. That's the day we put up the sign board of our brand. And if you see carefully, the board just says Nini's, even though the name is Nini's Kitchen. And that's because putting a board with just five alphabets was way cheaper for us at that time than putting a board which had all the 12 alphabets of the word Nini's Kitchen. So you can imagine the state of our finances at that time. To top it all, nobody even knew that we existed because again, no marketing budget. So after my day job, I would go door to door distributing pamphlets across all the corporate offices. For a socially awkward person like me, that activity was as enjoyable as having your soul sucked by Dementors in a Harry Potter movie. But I had no choice. I had to be pushed out of my comfort zone because there were literally zero walk-ins. Like I remember there was this day when this lady accidentally stumbled inside the restaurant, calmly looked around and then goes, Sunday ko bhi itna khali hai, matlab, burai hoga. Like right on my face and then walked out. So Nini, my mother-in-law, decided to take matters in her own hands and she would approach these unsuspecting couples sitting in the parking lot, minding their own sweet business. And you know, she would be like, Bita, garmi mein kyu baithe ho? Upar se koi dekh lega aapko. Ek kaam karo, hamare restaurant mein aake baith jau, kuch order mat karna, bas aise ki hawa khao. You know, taki restaurant thoda bhara bhara lage. So when there weren't any couples around, me and Ankit pretended to be guests in our own restaurant and we would sit on this uh, table next to the glass door so that if someone walked in, the restaurant wouldn't look as dead as it really was. But uh, despite whatever we were doing, things were not working out. And there was this day when the total billing amount of the entire day was 156 rupees. 156 for a restaurant with a 10 membered staff. That amount was lesser than what my auto had charged me to drop me from my college to the restaurant. That was also the day five of our 10-member team quit. And I don't blame them because honestly, nobody would want to be part of a sinking ship. So I was already the order taker and the manager. But after these guys quit, I also became the table cleaner, the dishwasher and the toilet scrubber. So when people my age were getting high on life and wanderlusting, here I was getting high on phenyl, harpic, lysol and pitambri shining powder which by the way is an amazing product. Matlab kisma chhod ke baki sab chamka deta hai wo. But uh, <laughs> we, <laughs> we were going through a footy kismat phase and finances were like really really tight. There was this one time we could not pay our electricity bill on time and they cut off our power supply. Now that really hurt us because it was a weekend and we used to look forward to weekends because on weekends our neighboring restaurant would have this huge waiting and sometimes when people would get tired they'd be like Achha, chalo, ye baju mein kuch khula hai, chota sa, khali hai, yahi baid jate hai. and that is exactly what we wanted for people to just step inside once 
and uske baad to we knew that we would do everything in our power to make sure that it wasn't their last visit so when they cut off our electricity my only option was to do what nirupa roy used to do in every 80s movie ever which was to sell off the only piece of jewelry i had which was a pair of gold earrings but at least we got our electricity back now by this time things were so bad that if we had a plan b we would have definitely quit and taken up knitting or pottery or whatever it is that you do to get over trauma but we didn't have a plan b not out of choice but because we were so broke so broke that even our reality check had bounced on us so for us not having a plan b kind of work because sometimes when you don't have a plan b you tend to focus on finding solutions to make your plan a work no matter how entangled it may be so we started spending every waking minute in trying to build strategies to make a plan a work and the thing that kept us going was the fact that we truly genuinely believed in our food and we had decided ki bahut ho gaya ab to ladna bhi hai aur marna bhi nahi hai but there was this another ladai that we were also fighting internally with our staff you see we believe that even if we got one person that person deserved to be served the freshest food they'd had with a service they were not likely to forget for a very long time but our kitchen guys would get visibly upset every time we threw away something that wasn't fresh and they'd be like kyun fake rahe ho iska to mast repairing ho jayega kisi ko pata nahi chalega and our service guys would look shocked every time we gave something complimentary to a guest and you know they would look at us with this expression of वाह 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 गांव बसा नहीं लुटवाने पहले चल पड़े सो वी हैड टू मेक देम अनलर्न वॉट एवर दे हैड लर्न एट द प्रीवियस वर्क प्लेस एंड मेक देम अंडरस्टैंड आर बिलीव एंड क्रिएट आवर ओन कल्चर ग्रेजुअली दे डिड स्टार्ट वॉर्मिंग अप टू आर आइडियाज दैट इज मी माइंडिंग माई क्यूट लिटल कैश काउंटर एंड ऑल्सो लुकिंग लाइक माइकल जैक्सन इन दिस पिक्चर वाइल अंकित वॉज इन द किचन एंड आई सी दिस लेडी लुकिंग फ्यूरियस ओके walking up to me and she started yelling at me now the strange thing was the louder she yelled the wider my smile grew and i couldn't believe what she was saying and i will quote her she said what kind of a chila chalu restaurant is this that you guys don't have a waiting chair a waiting chair that's when i looked up and i realized that for the first time in 8 months since we had started we had had a full house and a furious lady yelling for a chair so she could wait outside for her turn to dine with us she ultimately walked out saying i am so disappointed and i'm going to let this know to the friend who recommended this place to me took me a while to let that sink in that there were people out there talking about us and recommending us to other people clearly we were doing something right You see what was happening was that everyone who was dining at Nini's was acting as our own influencer influencing their friends and family to dine with us. So this was a case of organic influencer marketing done right back in 2014 when there weren't even any influencers around. And we were too busy focusing on giving an impeccable experience to realize that people were choosing to listen to their friends and family over believing some massive billboards or front page newspaper ads. that other restaurant owners could afford and we could not that month for the first time i did not have to wait for my college to pay my salary so i could in turn pay my restaurant staff we had achieved the coveted break even back in 2014 when we started at the end of the first month a total of only 350 people had dined with us today we have more than 350 people working with us as a part of team nilis on an average 35000 people dine with us every single month across our five outlets this journey from 350 to 35000 was possible because of a lot of things but patience truly tops that list because anything that's worth fighting for will never come in a shiny yellow 2 minute mein taiyar packet like warren buffett says you cannot produce a baby in a month by making nine women pregnant so yeah it's going to take its own sweet time that's a picture of me and ankit really it is me and ankit at the times food awards 
Now the Times Food Awards are a big deal, okay? Because these are like the Oscars of the food scenes. And I remember being so starstruck because sitting right across us were these legendary restaurant founders, like literally the restaurants Ankit grew up eating at. And we were so nervous, we couldn't even hold each other's hands because our palms were like so sweaty. So when they called out our name on the stage, both of us turned into these two deers transfixed to the spot by some blinding headlight. And they had to literally push us ki jao ja ke apna award leke ao. So after the award, people were like, oh, you've grown so much in such a short time. Congratulations. So thanks to the award and the recognition, there were people discovering us now. And to them, our story was like an overnight success story. And I cannot emphasize this enough that there is nothing called an overnight success story. You have got to dress up, show up and give your best every single day. And we chose to do that. We chose to deal with rent, staff, salaries, accounts, authorities, licensing, health official, wastage, food cost, dirty diapers, choke drains, burst pipes, cops, OTP purchase, vendor payment and a zillion other things. Day after day, year after year. And it took us 8 years and 26 days to become an overnight success. Did we do it alone? Absolutely not. Nothing. Nothing without our team. In fact, if we could, we would give them all superhero capes, but they would end up using that also as a bartan wiping wala duster because apparently you can never have enough kitchen dusters in a restaurant. Especially this guy Vipin has been pestering me for kitchen dusters since 2014 when he was a waiter at Nini's. Today, he is the manager of our Chandkheda outlet. He doesn't have any professional hotel management degree. But we chose to train him to be the manager over hiring someone more qualified from the outside because we wanted our team to grow with us. And that's why all our current managers and chefs are people who joined us at junior posts and were promoted over the years because these are our people. So from holding their hands in vaccination queues to dancing in their weddings, we've done it all together because these are the people who gave us the luxury of time to dream big and grow. But when you're trying to grow, you need to remember that you cannot make everyone happy. And we learned it the hard way because initially when people would leave us bad reviews, we would wonder what we did wrong even though we knew that we had done everything right. It was much later that we understood that not everyone is going to be happy high on you all the time. As long as 90% of your guests are happy, you are good. Because there's always going to be that 10% who would rather go for Oreo pakode and Ruavza Maggi and Gulab Jamun Paratha and whatnot. So yeah, that is us getting the Times Food Awards for the next consecutive five years. Now, <laughs> just when you thought things were nice and shiny and rosy and bright, COVID hit us. Now, the logical thing would have been to lay low and let the storm pass. But when your personality type is you go and open another brand in the middle of the pandemic. So we opened our bakery division in the middle of the first wave. And I'm not going to lie, there are days when we wonder, kya thi? But then I remember that we are the larna bhi hai aur marna bhi nahi hai people. So we are going to keep working on it day after day, year after year, till we make this venture also an overnight success. Now, this was supposed to be the original ending of this talk. But is it even a TED talk if I don't end it with a profound, life-changing, motivational quote by a famous, really, really wise guy? So here goes, like Michael Scott says in The Office, <laughs> you miss... <laughs> You miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. So go ahead, shoot your shot. If you miss it, try again. Because ultimately, it is the courage to continue that's the real game changer here. Thank you so much. Thank you.